وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول A question I asked What is a Wahhabi? Is it a sect? الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين It's a very, very important question. It's a very beautiful question. And a question which really is a source of a lot of confusion for a lot of people. So what is a Wahhabi? And is it a sect? So first of all, let me ask a question to begin with. Who is Al-Wahhab? Now be careful, we don't answer this one wrong. We don't want to get this one wrong. Who is Al-Wahhab? The word Wahhabi goes back to Wahhab. So who is Al-Wahhab? Al-Wahhab is Allah. As Allah has just said in the Quran, إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَّابِ Indeed, you, O Allah, are Al-Wahhab, the one who is continuously giving. So hold on a second. Is this sect people who believe in Allah or something else? They say, no, we didn't mean Wahhab at all. What we actually meant was Abdul Wahhab, a man by the name of Abdul Wahhab. So when we look at this man by the name of Abdul Wahhab, uh, we don't find anything particularly significant and we don't find any major difference between him and between the people who use this word. So we go back to them and say to them that we're a bit confused. We don't find anything about this Abdul Wahhab. They say, no, no, I'm sorry. We actually meant Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. Subhanallah, we went from Al Wahhab to Abdul Wahhab to Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. Muhammad, the son of Abdul Wahhab. To me, that would make sense linguistically to call Muhammadi, not Wahhabi, but that's a, a topic for another day. Who was Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab? He was a scholar. He lived about 250 to 300 years ago in what is now Saudi Arabia. And like any scholar of Islam or any person who writes on the topic of Islam, that person should be judged by what they wrote, what they said, what they did. And not by hysterics, not by what people name call or say about them, but simply judged by their own works. Everyone has statements accepted and statements rejected. And although I have immense respect for the noble Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, may Allah shower his mercy upon him, I do not believe that he is someone that everything that he said was correct because everybody has things they say right and things they say wrong. But it's not about individual things. It's about looking at that person based on their books. So many people use this word Wahhabi and they say this person is Wahhabi and that person is Wahhabi. But actually when you ask them, they, they don't even know anything about the word Wahhab or even Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab. And they certainly don't quote anything from his books or look at anything that he had written. But it just becomes a hysteria and just a name that is slung around to the point where we have even seen situations where they use this word for non-Muslims as in uh, Hindus, Sikhs, is, this Hindu is Wahhabi, this Sikh is Wahhabi because they just have no understanding of the word, no understanding of the person. The people who follow or who admire, I shouldn't say follow because I was making a point that we actually don't follow anyone other than the Prophet The people who admire the works of Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala do not call themselves Wahhabi. They are not a sect that calls themselves Wahhabi. 
They are simply people who admire his works along with the works of many, many thousands of scholars other than him. They don't take everything that he said, and that is simply because nobody other than a prophet says everything right. They don't take their religion from him that he is the only source of the religion and there is no other source of religion except him. Rather, he is a scholar in a long, long line and tradition of scholars. What he said was, and what he called to, was the Quran and the Sunnah, according to the understanding of the early generations, leaving off acts of worship to other than Allah, leaving off praying and worshipping uh, the people in the graves, praying to the people in the graves and worshipping people in the graves. In his time, Saudi Arabia was not like it is today. There were graves that were worshipped. People were had all kinds of superstitions. People were doing lots of things that were in reality taking them away from the religion of Islam. And he wrote books to call them back to the truth. These books are full of ayat and ahadith, and anyone who wants to critique what he said is welcome to open his book and critique something he said, but with knowledge. As for just slinging the name around like an accusation, this goes against what Allah told us specifically in the Quran. Do not insult one another and don't call each other names. What an evil thing it is that you have the name Fasiq after you were given the name of Iman. You were called a believer. You were known as a believer. And now because of your insulting and your use of accusations and name calling and nicknames, you become the label is given to you, Fasiq. And whoever doesn't repent, it is they who are the wrongdoers. As I said, critique of what the Sheikh wrote is like every scholar, it has to be done with knowledge. A person opens his book, says the Sheikh mentioned this hadith, I don't believe this hadith is authentic. The Sheikh mentioned this hadith here, but I believe the correct understanding is this. This is what so and so said. This is what, it's just critique. As for name calling and al qab, then this is fisk. This is a kind of fusuq, a kind of defiance and disobedience. And it's an evil characteristic which Allah criticized. So, no, really, this idea of Wahhabis, this is just a nickname which is used for people who love the Quran and the Sunnah and try to follow what the companions were upon. And it's a nickname used by the people who are enemies of the Qur'an and the Sunnah and who dislike what the Prophet ﷺ brought and what the Sahaba were upon. And so they use these kind of evil names. Or it's the use of people who are ignorant and they don't understand what it is that the Shaykh called to and what it is that the Shaykh believed in. And I would encourage anyone who wants a summary of that to take hold of the Shaykh's book, Kitab al-Tawheed, the Book of Tawheed, and to simply read all of the many, many ayat and ahadith the Sheikh included and the chapter titles that he wrote and to see for yourself what it is that the Sheikh called to. As we said, we don't believe that anyone is 100% right 100% of the time, but we believe that the Sheikh called to the Quran and to the Sunnah and to the way of the companions, as did many, many, many thousands and thousands and thousands of scholars before him. We don't give him any special attention over scholars, other scholars of Islam, but rather we appreciate his efforts to call the people back to the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal. There's no sect involved around the Shaykh and there should not be any sect. The Shaykh was not in favor of sectarianism and partisanship, but rather the Shaykh called to the Quran, the Sunnah, and that which the companions were upon. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention and Allah knows best. If you have any questions you'd like to see answered as part of this series, then you can email us at questions at amau.org.